Now look, James, I, I spoke a bit in my introduction about critical race theory. I gave a sort of rudimentary, uh, rudimentary explanation of what woke is, but you've done a huge amount of work on the subject of critical race theory. So can you tell us please, in as plain a terms as you'd like or not, what is critical race theory? Well, I will start off with a quip rather than a formal discussion, <laughs> and that is that critical race theory is calling everything you want to control racist until you control it. So if you decide you want to control a business or a university or a person, you accuse it a thing of being racist until you have control over it. That's mm. what it is operationally. But that's not a very good definition. A, a better explanation would be that it is the Marxist theory of conflict. In other words, society is split between oppressor versus oppressed, as Marx wrote in the first paragraph of the Communist Manifesto. But the line of split of division isn't economic class anymore, it's now race. Mm. And you're going to analyze that the overclass ex uh, alienates and exploits the underclass, which would in this case be white people alienate and exploit people of color, and um, that the people of color need to awaken a racial consciousness of how this dynamic of systemic racism works so that they can band together and affect transformative change on society by seizing the means of, in this case, racial cultural production. Mm. Uh, their claim is that whiteness projects onto all of society, and so all the other racial cultural groups are defined in terms of their relationship to whiteness. So they want to take that over and make sure that it's whatever they call anti-racism, which by definition is to redistribute uh or to discriminate, as Ibram Kendi put it, he said the only remedy to racist discrimination is anti-racist discrimination. Mm. So you are going to re now redistribute shares to undo the harms of the past as part of its its explicit program. Mm. Uh, but it's just calling everything that you want to control racist until you control it. I think that's a, a very good um, definition then for people who oppose critical race theory to have because, you know, as we saw from um, Bethany Mandel, it is hard to think of the, or to define these terms simply because they're not simple terms. So everyone, make a note. Uh, if you, a lefty asks you what is critical race theory, you can pop out exactly what James said there. And look, James, one thing that frustrates me about the left and critical race theory is the gaslighting and the feigned ignorance about it. I mean, good example, um, lefty TV host Joy Reid would continue continually insisted a couple of years ago that it's not taught as a subject in schools, so therefore it's not taught. But that's not what parents and other conservatives are concerned about, is it? No, they're playing a trick. And mm. so uh, just to be frank, another real short definition, if anybody wants, it's two words. Critical race theory is race Marxism. I wrote a book titled that, so you can go read the 100,000 word argument I gave to make the case, but uh, it's race Marxism. But yeah, people like Joy Reid, what they're doing is actually they're playing, a, uh, they're playing a word game with you. You say, oh, critical race theory is not taught. What they mean is it's not taught as a formal subject. There's no critical race theory class. They're not busting out, you know, the legal critique papers or books and teaching the children the thought of critical race theory. What they're actually doing is practicing critical race theory on children, uh, which is an inseparable part because Marxist theories or these activist theories explicitly say that there's no such thing as theory without practice. Mm. So theory and practice are actually unified as one thing, but they're practicing critical race theory on the children by teaching them to see the world from what they call a racial cl consciousness or a critical race consciousness, um, which is really just a update of what Mao Zedong called the people's standpoint. He tried to awaken the people to the people's standpoint so they'd know the, the, the view of the worker and the peasant. Well, here it is that you're going to see the view from the critically you know, in, enlightened racial minority. Uh, and that's what they're trying to do to the children. So Ironically, she had that conversation with the person who gave Critical Race Theory its name on her show, Joy <laughs> Reid did, and that's Kimberly Crenshaw. Oh, yes. And she said, Kim, is, is, this, is this theory being taught in schools? And she said, well, you know, uh, if it was, I would know. Mm -hmm. It turns out at roughly the same time, because I recently saw this book physically, I got a picture of myself taken with it. There's a book, a, a school book for like sixth grade, so it's 11, 12 years old, something like that, children. And Kimberly Crenshaw's picture's in it. Oh. Like, she's in it as <laughs> it herself. And she said, oh, I would have known if it was, oh, what she are you talking known. about, Kim? <laughs> she's lying. And, and you know, 
same episode, Joy Reid said, is critical race theory Marxist? And she just completely dodged the question utterly. She didn't even try to directly mm. lie. She just dodged the question uh, and talked about something completely different. So um, race Marxism is what it is. And they gaslight and lie because if people know what it is, they won't put up with it mm -hmm. because they know the destructive potential of Marxism to tear apart a civilization.